The following podcast is a Sempronto Media production. Welcome to the Waste Away Podcast. Hey guys, I'm so excited to introduce to you Alexander Cortez. He was a personal trainer. I guess he still is, but he has transitioned into just training people what they need to do to train to live and how they health is freedom. So welcome, Alexander. How are you doing, Chantel? Great. So I want to talk about you personally a little bit and talk mm-hmm. about how you got into intermittent fasting and how did you even hear about it to start? Uh, so I, I started doing it before it was ever a cool thing to do. Uh, this was this was actually 10 years ago at least. So it was around, I couldn't, t- I, I couldn't tell you if it was 2009, 2010, but I, it was, uh, so I was, I was just started per- as a personal trainer. Um, I was only probably about 19, 20. And I found an article on the internet, or I guess a website, I should say, and it was uh, Eat, Stop, Eat by Brad Pilon. And I think, I, I don't know if anyone wrote about intermittent fasting before he did although uh, so yeah so i found that website and it wasn't but now i think about this it wasn't actually if which was his uh, dietary model it was fasting one day a week for 24 hours and uh, that was my first exposure kind of to the idea of like oh like you can like doing like doing like a very long extended fast for the sake of body fat control you know mental clarity just you know personal challenge so i started using that the eat stop eat model where one day a week I'd have a fast. And I always liked it as for physical, mental, kind of the simplicity benefits. Um, and that was so 2010, so yeah, 2011, 12, 13, I guess I would say, I found actual, you know, like 16-8 intermittent fasting, as it's called. And that was Martin Burkan. Now, I guess, you know, he's, he's sort of like the, I guess say the godfather of IF on the internet. Um, and so that was 2013, and ever since then, I've used it kind of just on and off when I feel like, and it fit my natural eating schedule quite well, since I've never been a breakfast person. I, I very rarely am I hungry in the morning, and I actually, don't, I don't like to eat in the morning, so, you know, waiting until 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, or, you know, even doing something, let's say, 18 hours, or, you know, whatever the case may be, it just, it felt very natural, honestly, um, and it's, it's very, obviously very easy to control your, you know, body composition uh, when you're only eating twice a day. So, I mean, that, yeah, it's been, it's been a while, like, I'd say like over 10 years. Awesome. Now, what about a lot of people say something like, you know, let me ask you this. When do you work out? So you say you don't really love to eat breakfast in the morning, but what, what time do you work out? Uh, that changes as well. So if I, if I do, tr- if I do train very early in the morning, um, then I'll, I'll eat right afterwards. Uh, so that's always a common thing with people like, well, you know, do you train, you know, during the fast and you still eat fasting? You know, I've always told, I always advise people, if you're going to train, you always eat immediately afterwards if you've been fasting. Um, you know, and if, and if IF doesn't work for that, just because of the schedule where like, oh, well, I, I can't fast until X time or I can't fit my workout in, it might not be the best thing for you, um, you know, flat out. Like it doesn't, you know, it's not going to work for everybody. You know, obviously, if you have certain uh, scheduling constraints or of what your day is and your priorities, but in regards to when I train, typically it's around mid morning, not or later morning. So it might be around like eleven, twelve, one p.m. So yeah, on those days I'll and you'll eat afterwards. Yeah, then I'll I'll just eat immediately afterwards. And those days at my eating window might only be maybe six, seven hours, you know, maybe five hours. There are days where I'll just have like a very large meal, and then this kind of like continuous just protein shakes. Yeah, that, that that's what I like to do. Uh, and then th- there's days where I won't do IF at all and I'll eat before training if I feel like I need to eat before training. So it, it's very variable. I um, mean, it really depends upon what my, like my training goals are at the time. Like if I'm trying to gain muscle mass, uh, you know, like I'm in a you know, mass gaining phase, I'll do like, well, it wouldn't be IF. I'll do, you know, a 12 hour, essentially like, you know, eating window, then like a 12 hour not eating. Um, you know, if I'm trying to lose body fat, then it'll be much more strict and there'll be a set uh, training time. My schedule tends to, tends to vary a lot just depending upon where I'm living. So, yeah. So I know that, like you said, like there's a lot of guys out there that are super ripped. They're like super big and they are huge proponents of intermittent fasting. Um, and I guess the question is, 
what, how do you feel about training in a fasted state? So like, are you fine to do cardio in a fasted state? Like when, or, or how do you feel about that? Training in a fasted state, uh, you can definitely get used to it. I've always found it works better for men. I found it fine than women, you know, women just for, you know, differences in, in metabolism, uh, and blood sugar regulation, trying to train fasted, uh, like, you know, training up, let's say like 13, 14 hours at the end of a fast, it just tend to be very, very low energy. Some, some women can do it, you know, some just, it's just a struggle and it makes for a very poor workout. Um, you know, I've never really had a problem with it. I notice it more if I, if I get a lack of sleep and then I try to train and you know, I'm fasting, definitely energy takes a hit. Uh, if I get sufficient sleep, then it's really not an issue at all. Uh, so you know, for myself, like I can typically do a pretty solid hour of training. Uh, I would pass that point though, if you're trying to train for more than an hour and you've also, you know, you're in a fasted state. Yeah. There's definitely a difference in physiological performance. Uh, you know, and the, guy, the guys who've done it, who are, you know, sort of big and ripped. Yeah. I've seen this over the years where nobody gets big intermittent fasting. Like if you're, if you're a guy and you're really trying to build muscle mass substantially over you know a few years, Doing IF plus trying to to mass gain that way, it it those two goals clash with each other. It, it can be pulled off. It can. I mean, I'm I'm not that's not to say that people don't do it, uh, but it's it's not. I would never consider that conducive, uh, you know, to that you know, particular. So let's you know, desire. say that their their number one goal is fat loss. So like fat like fat loss is the number one goal. What is your opinion about? training in a fasted state in that section of trying to just go mainly for fat loss. Yeah. Well, that works well. I mean, with fat loss, if, if you're only concerned, it's just like you just, I need the body fat to come off. Yeah. I mean, that will, that'll definitely work. Um, that's a, so you have to sort of pick, just pick and choose what you want for fat loss. You know, there's no arguing that it definitely works well. It's because of the, the chronological constraints and the, uh, you know, calorie consumption. It, it's hard to overeat. <laughs> yeah. it also makes it easy to create a deficit. Um, you know, even then, like I, I definitely favor keeping workouts a bit more abbreviated if you're going to be fasting and training. Um, and I think, you know, that's pretty reflective of, you know, most of the body of sort of evidence with Burkan and, you know, even guys like Gregor Gallagher, who, you know, their training models, even that they've sold, it's, it's, it's very quick training. It's no more than three, four days a week or now the gym in 45 minutes. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're, like you said, if you're trying to lose body fat, works great. You know, if you're aspiring to something else, you know, probably want to reconsider that. Gotcha. So um, I know you have some different products online and um, I saw one that you have called the Skinny Fat Manifesto. So talk to us, what is that product? Yeah, so Skinny Fat Manifesto, um, it's something of an unrecognized epidemic that people just don't realize how unhealthy they are. There's nothing new with that to say about how unhealthy the American public is. But for men, especially women too, uh, having a skinny fat body, which is basically having excess levels of body fat relative to the body weight. So if you were to go on a BMI chart, it'd be like sort of like the 24, 25, 26, 27 range where you're, you weigh too much, but you're not, not actually obese, but you weigh more than you should, but you're still kind of, you're still okay, according to most doctors. But then there's they, these guys also have very low levels of lean body mass. So this is kind of like, kind of like why you could let's call it like the dork physique of guys for the guy like really skinny arms, really skinny legs. Pot belly, easily gain body fat like the chest, very soft, don't have athletic genetics. That's a lot of guys now for various uh, biological, you know, sort of this inert, you know, nature and nurture reasons. And I'd, I'd worked with this population over the years of being a personal trainer of guys where they, they've got really bad genetics, um, really bad genetics, really bad lifestyle. And they don't necessarily respond very well to just like, oh, we'll come in three days a week and, you know, we'll get in the hour and your body will change. You know, they'll see changes. But really breaking out of that body type it requires it requires more training, flat out, and it also requires being very conscientious of the diet. You, you can't really afford to make mistakes, and you really, really have to change your food sources, eliminate sugar, eliminate alcohol, get better sleep, find out what your hormone levels are in regards to testosterone. A lot of times, let's talk about that. Let's, let's talk yeah. about that because I know you do have a course that you have on testosterone, and I think it's funny you put on there that testo- testosterone is the master hormone for men, and it just it it does affect so many things with you know muscle strength, their skin health, their mood. Yes. 
So um, what? let's talk a little bit about what are the normal testosterone levels for men and what are you seeing people come in at? Like, are they, are men coming in so much lower? Yeah. So testosterone levels have been dropping for about four decades. Um, you know, this is pretty established at this point. Uh, so the you know, average levels, I mean, if you, if you go look at the average levels, you know, what, what's the average level, it's this big range now and anywhere depending upon the source, but the journal, journal accepted normal range is 300 um, to like 1,100, you know, you know, parts per billion. So it, you know, that, that's a massive, massive range. And, you know, for most guys, it's very common. Uh, I've had you know, clients, yeah, I, I'm, you know, I don't ask them, like, you need to get blood work to work with me. But I'll tell them, like, you know, if you're feeling a little energy, you're feeling depressed, you're feeling tired, uh, you know, low sex drive, you know, lack of focus, like depression, you know, go get your testosterone levels checked. So, you know, these guys, when they come in, if, you know, they kind of display that kind of set of symptoms where they're just not high energy and they've got these psychological effects, I'll always tell them, you know, but you go, it's good to know. Um, you know, especially in regards to long-term health, you want to know what your levels are when you're young because as you get older, they're going to typically decline. So if you know at age 25 that you're at 750, let's say, and then you get to age 30 and it's gone down to 700, okay, it's gone down a little bit, but maybe you could manage that. But if, you know, for a lot of men, this is just so common that they never get, they never go to the doctor. They don't know their blood work at all. They go to the doctor, let's say they're in their mid-30s. They're depressed, they have no sex drive, they can't get an erection, uh, you know, they're this general life is feels you know poor. You get testosterone levels checked. Maybe it's three. Let's say it's three twelve. So it's low. You know it's low normal. Well, doctor says, well, that's still in normal range. You're fine, but they don't feel good. <laughs> um, so and if you actually, you know, I've worked with you know various testosterone replacement doctors for a long time. Typically, most men, if you want to stay you know, relatively optimized where you're feeling good, you want to be a at minimum about five hundred or above. Um, especially if you're younger, you should be in the seven hundred range. And that's not, most men are not. Yeah, you know, I, I consider. Let I me mean, have written about this many times. I consider it a legitimate, probably unrecognized epidemic that most men today that to, to get the prescribed with the, uh, to get prescribed uh, SSRIs, they get diagnosed with depression and anxiety. I don't think they have any of these real psychological conditions. They just have low testosterone. So if you give, if you psychologically or physiologically depress testosterone levels in a man, where you let's say you, know, you see this sometimes with like military. Um, I've seen this actually of military where they go through boot camp or like special forces training, you know, lack of sleep, lack of food, extreme stress, T levels just plummet. And at the end, they, they don't feel good. Like they, they're, they, they, their health is actually in a very precarious state. Uh, and you know, for a lot of guys today, they already have low testosterone levels from the modern environment with environmental estrogens, uh, with really poor life, with really poor diets, lack of exercise, you know, this being a very service, like, uh, you, know, you could say sort of a feminized environment. They don't, you know, don't lift weights. They don't compete. They're, not around other men. They don't have any male bonds. So their test levels are low. And, you know, you go and get checked and you find out, oh, wow. Uh, you know, so what, what do you do about that? There's natural means of raising it, which I always encourage you guys to pursue first. A lot of it's a lifestyle change. And if that doesn't work and it really stays, you know, it's sort of hypogonadal where, you know, you're 25 and your test levels are 350. Yeah, maybe it is, you know, maybe it is uh, time to consider TRT. And then if you're in your 30s, definitely 400% for sure. Are you enjoying the summit and hearing all the great advice that you don't want to forget? Get the all access pass and get all the video presentations and the audio downloads of every single session. You can get the all access pass and listen to the summit all year long if you want. The best part is you get all of the transcripts so you can go back and read and see every little note that they talked about. Go to FastingResetSummit.com to get your all-access pass today. Hey guys, Lauren here. Did you know Chantel just released her new book, Fasting of Freedom? The book is all about the benefits of fasting from a biblical perspective. You'll discover how you can see supernatural healing in your body. You will learn how to discern God's still, small whisper to guide you and help you make decisions. You will also master utilizing God's power to overcome difficult times and receive a breakthrough when you are stuck. And you will see how fasting can help you gain victory over a nagging area of sin in your life. You can order your copy right now on Amazon or go to fastingoffreedom.com. Link is in the show notes. Hey guys, I just finished writing a quick little 20 page recipe book that has some of my most amazing smoothie recipes. Everyone that comes over is like, Chantel, you can turn a smoothie into gold. And so I'm sharing that with you free. It's got my tropical colada smoothie recipe, my extra super green smoothie that tastes delicious, and it's all for free. 
Go to ChantelRayWay.com slash smoothie for your free book. I've also developed my own product line. You'll be able to get all these multivitamins that I'm doing in one pill. Each nutrient is totally legit. All the formulas are tested and science-backed without any mystery additives. Personally, my thyroid is better. My skin is glowier. I have more energy. This supplement is vegan, non-GMO, gluten, and allergy-free. Go to ChantelRayWay.com slash supplements and check them out. Now back to the show. So what are some things that cause someone to have low testosterone, first of all? So there is something of a genetic aspect to it. And I mean, this gets kind of deep into nutrition where I, I optimally, optimally, a person, if you eat a, a healthy diet, you know, in the sense that you're getting sufficient macronutrients, sufficient micronutrients, you're not eating trans fats, you're not eating hydrogenated oils, you're not consuming vegetable oil, uh, you're not eating like a, a high sugar diet. And so those things, sugar can acutely lower testosterone. Um, so if you if you come from a family where your family is very healthy, they're very genetically robust, let's say, and they, they have offspring, you should probably have normal levels, you know, contingent with your like I said, sort of like nature, which just is your your uh, your genetic stock, and then hopefully you have a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, like you're going to be fine. You know, average levels 1950s. If you look at them, uh, you'd have older men that were 70 years old. Their testosterone levels would still be 500 plus. Um, it was a very normal thing for a young guy in his 20s to have levels close to a thousand. You know, that was that was common. You know, 60, 70 years ago. Today, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just so many reasons. Like, you know, like, why is it low today? You know, it, you know, it's all it's a combination of factors, uh, you know, with lifestyle, then probably with this parents being a very poor health. You have people today who their parents are they're they're overweight, parents are overweight. Being overweight is a very um common cause of or at least contributor to having low testosterone. So yeah, you kind of have to you kind of have to deal the hand you're dealt with. Some people just do not have you know good genetic robustness that way, and then they're also trying to overcome a bad lifestyle. Uh, lifestyle you can optimize, uh, you know, you can of you know, course. You know, if your parents though, like you can't pick your parents, so you have to deal the hand you're dealt. What about sleep or stress? Oh yeah, no, I mean, yeah, sleep is massive. Like sleep, if you don't get sufficient sleep, you're looking at a drop of anywhere, from, you know, about a quarter. So if, you, if you're getting less than, let's just say, seven hours of sleep, you're on that sort of six hour, you know, tilt where you're getting insufficient sleep. So that's about twenty five percent drop. Uh, you know, high sugar diet, sugar will acutely drop testosterone. You know, every time you consume it. You know, maybe by about 10 percent 20 percent if you're chronically consuming sugar so you know standard you know American office worker diet you know co- coffee in the morning not no real breakfast low protein well you're basically you know dropping testosterone throughout the day you know, well, over and over again uh, you know lack of sufficient you know healthy saturated fats so you know that's a big one the you know, low fat dieting you know that's probably that's a big killer uh, you know, even lack of carbs actually that that's something that like you know, it's overlooked in the uh, crossFit athletes so it's, it's real common you know, for those people where they want to eat very low carb, if you actually look at the body of research, eating a very low carb, very low carbohydrate diet, that's not conducive to testosterone at all. So, just for normal testosterone levels, you actually need a, a moderate amount of carbohydrates. You know, then you have to look at carbohydrate sources. So, you have all these, yeah, like I said, you have all these factors to play. Um, the other things that can drop it. I mean, stress is a big one, but you know, how do you quantify stress? So then, it's, it's either stress management or looking at what your your recovery is. You know, mindset also plays a role as well. If you get men together and have them uh, compete at something, testosterone levels will rise. That's very well recognized. That's why you know guys like play sports or you know uh, combat sports or anything where men have to be in a room with each other. It's a testosterone driven atmosphere. It drives competition, and your endogenous production is tied to your mindset. So if you're in a situation where you kind of have to get fired up and try and go in, testosterone levels can rise. Um, yeah, I, I saw a one sort of research article a few years back where it was showing a testosterone level drop in a the losing team of the Super Bowl. So they, I'm not sure how this was done, and this could be kind of bunk, but it seems like it'd be correct. Where the uh, social numbers looked at in men whose uh, teams, you know, were competing in, um, you, know, in you know, football teams, and you know, the the losers of the Super Bowl, their testosterone was dropping like 40. percent So you know, men when their team lost, their your T levels would drop because they were so discouraged. So yeah, so mindset plays a big role as well. Mm, I love that. So I love um, everyone needs to check out the 10 testosterone facts that men need to know. We've talked about number one, which is testosterone is the master hormone for men. Um, 
And number two is to know what your normal levels are. And so yes, what I kind of heard you say, like 700, depending on what age you are, right? So yeah. if you had to break yeah. it down super easy, like let's break it down like under 30, you want it to be here between like 30 and 40, you want it here. Kind of break that down a little bit. Yeah. So it's a big range. Um, yeah. And you know, let me preface, I'm not a medical physician, so I'm sure some doctors might argue this, but the people I've worked with and just based on what I've seen. So right. if you're under 30, uh, you sh- your testosterone levels should be 500 or above. If you're, if you're under 25, they should be above 600. Um, you know, that's, I'm being generous there. And so some men do have naturally lower levels. So, it, you know, regardless of everything else they do, but let's say if you're under 30, yeah, like I said, about should be um, or under twenty five should be about six hundred. Under thirty should be above five hundred. You know, in your thirties, you want to keep it. You know, again, five hundred or above. Yeah, ideally, it should be seven hundred plus. You know, for basically every age range. Um, yeah, so you know, you're you, seeing the guys. What, what I'm hearing you say is, if if the guys who are in the seven hundred range, they're really feeling good. Like their energy is yeah, high. Yeah, yes, one hundred percent. You're you're never gonna feel bad with test levels of seven hundred or above. Yeah, you know, and that's that's a thing. Like this is why I mean, it's it's variable. Uh, young guys, you know, teenagers in high school, they should be seven hundred, eight hundred, close to a thousand. They should. Guys in their twenties should definitely be seven hundred. Guys in their thirties, you, know, you can make an argument. Yeah, you know, maybe it's at five hundred, six hundred, maybe seven hundred. Um, and then at, at forty, you know, if it keeps dropping, you're gonna probably have to go on TRT. Honestly, um, yeah. You know, I mean, physiological levels. Like if you're truly optimized, like I'll say it this way: if you're truly optimized, like you're in pristine, awesome health. You should be at 1,000, basically, from like 15 when you go through puberty, and you know, all the way up to even in your 50s, it should still be like 750. But there's just that the, the reality, the, the, the unfortunate reality is today that probably 90% of men are hormonally unhealthy that way. Um, it's going to drop, you're going to get older, you're going to hit 40. And yeah, if you've had kids already, uh, go on TRT. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it, like I said, the modern environment today, it's, it's kind of screwed. Uh, but you know, for those those guys listening, like I, I mean, I'd encourage them to read the article. This is like I said, it's very multi variable. If it keeps yeah. dropping year over year, I um, mean, if you get checked now and it's kind of like lower ish, and you're at thirty one, you're probably going to need TRT to keep feeling normal. That's just the reality. That or just a huge amount of lifestyle changes. Um, but uh, yeah, there's there's very few guys today that I meet that like I, my natural levels right now. I'm thirty one. They're at like eleven hundred, and every doctor I've, I've the, the, the times I get blood work, you know, I see, I'll see a physician. And they're like, that's unheard of. Like they just, they just don't see that anymore um, at all. Uh, you know, first, you know, most of the guys that come in there my age, it'll be like the levels tested. It's like, oh, it's, it's 420. It's like, oh, it's a little bit low. You know, maybe you need to start lifting weights and, you know, lose some body fat and try and get that up. Uh, you know, it's so, yeah, I could, you know, it's, it's kind of like power distribution that so, way. Well, let me ask you a question because I always joke my husband. So my husband, literally, if I let him, we would have sex every morning and every night. Like he just yeah. can't ever get enough. Like I just tell him like, it's like just his appetite is just more than I can even handle, you know? So he, but I guess the question is, so like if someone wants to have sex every morning and every night, would, mm-hmm. What would you say their testosterone levels probably are, or does that have anything to do with it? Okay, it, it does. This is the funny thing: it does and it doesn't. <laughs> so it, typically, testosterone, like you like to think, like it's you know high testosterone libido, like yeah, that's that's accurate. That actually is, but men, there are men who can have high libido and not have very high levels. So I mean, like Ooh, the, that's you do, good that you, you said see that. It like it. Yeah, so it, that's. I mean, it's it's both it's it's true, but it's not the whole truth. It, it, like I said, it's funny. Um, you know, to, like, you know, if you're to talk to a doctor, you're like, doctor, like, you know, they ask you, like, well, you know, what's your sex drive like? And you're like, oh, like, I want to have sex. You know, I wake up, I'm horny. You're like, oh, that's good. Your testosterone are probably fine. You might get tested. Maybe they're 500. They're not exceptionally high, but your free testosterone is good. You're obviously your, you know, your uh, libido's there. So great. Um, so you know, like, they don't core. It, it's not like a one to one correspondence necessarily, like people think it is. Uh, you know, that said, there is a correspondence, but it's it's not, it's not, you know, let's say like, okay, I'm at 500 and I have no sex drive. I'm at 1,000, I have crazy sex drive. You could be, you know, within that normal range, you could have a huge sex drive. You could be higher and maybe have a normal sex drive, but it's not, you know, what a woman would consider excessive sex drive. But I mean, I, I'll, I'll say this. Every, every guy I know who's like 800 and above, like their libido is extremely high. You know, it's every okay. day, multiple times a day. That's just how it goes. 
So, I mean, you could definitely use, use that as an indicator of like, yeah, he probably does have, you know, let's just say high normal levels. Um, but you know, it's like, it's not a guarantee. So, I mean, it sort of, it works in, it works forward, but it doesn't work reverse. Got it. Makes sense. Okay. So testosterone fact number three, testosterone is highly in, is a highly in lifestyle dependent. So you said on here, like, let's say you get your, your levels tested at 520 and you're 24. And then you say, okay, well, do I need testosterone, testosterone replacement therapy? What would be the answer to that? I would, I would say no. The number of guys that need that truly need TRT in their twenties is really, really low. Um, you know, like I, I'll, I'll say, I'm very pro steroids. I mean, if guy, if you know, there's guys listening to this, you know, just in general, you know, where men like they want to build muscle mass, they want to be, you know, be bigger, they they want to you know, improve their self confidence that way. They find out that you got, they have like normal, normal levels. You know, yes, you can definitely try to optimize that. Like I've got like 50. I have a guide on there where it's like 50 different ways to naturally increase it. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, but if you, you know, genetically just aren't going to have real high levels and lifestyle wise, it's still not going to make a huge difference. Yeah. You could definitely use anabolic steroids, but then you're also having to deal with the consequences of that long term, which that's a very, I mean, it's a whole different subject. Sure. Um, but yeah, for most guys in their twenties, you know, they should be able to raise it pretty significantly. There are supplements Actually. Jimmy that can help, um, you know, just lifting weights, cleaning up their diets, supplementing with a few things like, yeah, you oftentimes can get up. 100, 200, you know, maybe even 300 points. It could be quite significant. Um, you just have to distribute, but you have to get the, get the data, like get your blood work done today, you know, make the changes, get tested three months later, see where it's at. You know, to get tested six months later, see where it's at. If you can go from, let's say, being 480, then now you've got it like 690. Okay, you're, you're, that's a good level. You're in the higher normal range. You probably feel better. Great. Um, the one thing I'll tell guys if they do have low testosterone levels is that, you know, don't expect that getting them up. It will definitely increase your energy levels. You'll feel stronger in the gym, but it's not going to have like a kind of sort of like steroidal effect. There's always, there's always this desire that men have that isn't there some way I can get like my body sort of like building more muscle way faster, but not use steroids, but get the effects of steroids. I'm not take steroids. I'm like that's that's not how it works. You know, having high testosterone levels, like yes, you will feel stronger in the gym. You will recover quicker. Uh, you get you know mentally, energy wise, sex wise. Yeah, it's great. But, you know, don't think that in getting your testosterone levels up that you're going to have these, like, superlative, you know, super physiological muscle mass, you know, strength gains. You're still normal. You're not enhanced, as, you know, we call it in the industry. Um, so it's still going to be, you know, a very patient timetable for changes. Okay. And then testosterone fact number four is eat a pro-testosterone diet. So what are some of those items that you say, here's really going to be some of those key items? Yeah, so it's basically it's going to be a whole foods diet of would be dead animals, um, natural like saturated fats. You know, the, two, the two big things to eliminate, you know, I tell for people is a, uh, you know, no, like basically just cut out sugar. Like this, eliminate. You know, and if one can argue this, but like just eliminate sugar and just makes it easy. Uh, so very low sugar, very low to no sugar, and then uh, no fake fats of any kind. No vegetable oil, no canola oil, no corn oil, no, you know, basically no no manufactured oil, anything. If you're going to use any kind of cooking oil, go with olive oil, avocado oil. Um, that's about it, actually, just those two. You know, walnut oil, maybe, um, you know, in terms of, you know, like healthy fat protein sources, like I said, meat, eggs, um, you know, nuts or, you know, you can, you can consume nuts as well. Carbohydrates, keep it to like rice, oatmeal, you know, fairly bro-ish, but that, you know, it works. It 100% works. Got it. Testosterone fact number five, lifting weights can increase your natural production. So talk about what do you, what do you recommend? Like how many times a week and how they can kind of increase that, their weight le- levels? I mean, that, that's a space, that's personal training. I mean, it's lifting weights 101. Like, look, so compound movements, try to train to build muscle mass, use all the rep ranges. Um, you know, you know, uh, one to five reps, five to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20. Uh, you know, that's, that's sort of this bodybuilding 101, honestly. Like I, the running joke in like my sort of industry is that, you know, lifting weights for men is like half the battle for self-improvement. If you lift weights, you, testosterone levels, yeah, they'll probably go up a bit, not significantly, but they'll go up a little bit. Uh, you're going to feel better. You're going to be stronger. You're going to look better naked. You know, psychologically, it's a huge difference. So, I mean, you know, kind of any, I mean, I've got probably 30 different training programs, but fundamentally they're all just compound movement based, bodybuilding based. You build muscle, you get stronger, you look better, you feel better, you do better. Uh, you know, starting out, you know, three, four, you know, 
four days a week is probably the sweet spot for most guys. If you want to train more, you can train more. If you're if you're really lazy and you're going to do sort of like the week, uh, not say the weekend warrior, but like I want to change, but not really, but I want to, then yeah, you could train two to three days. But you know, when I was when I was training active clients, like three days, it's like oh, you need to be here three days a week. That's kind of bullshit, actually. Like you you can get fit three days a week, but if you're really serious about something, do it four. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm trying to make get people to show up three days a week. I'm like you're probably going to quit. The people that are really dedicated, they'll be there in there four days a week. So four days a week of training. You know, push pull leg style split. Uh, it could be a body part split. I mean, every every kind of plan can work. Honestly, if it's well programmed. But uh, yeah, I mean, my running joke is telling guys like, get, just get your incline bench up, like get your upper body bigger. Uh, obviously, train your legs, squat, you know, push pull, uh, you know, you know, row, lunge, you know, all the fundamental stuff. All right, testosterone fact number six is sleep is imperative for natural production. So. Um, talk about that a little bit in the sense that like one of the things my husband says is he'll say something like, well, I just feel like my body only needs six hours of sleep. Like, I feel like I've, I do fine on six hours. How would you combat that? Uh, yeah, I actually wouldn't. So sleep, if you actually look at the body of research, uh, this is a, so the common things you hear is like seven, eight hours and you get told that like, you have to have seven, eight hours. It's actually a range. Some people, it, it's, it's something of like a bell curve Gaussian distribution. There are people who actually function all right in six hours of sleep. Sometimes they do. Now, you know, okay, now with that said, there are people who have never actually gotten full night's sleep, like just because of work lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So they've become so accustomed to being sort of like chronically, you know, like somewhat tired. That's just as they're normal. Um, that, that's a hard thing to describe to people. You know, if you have someone that they're really unhealthy, or maybe not really unhealthy, but they just they don't get much sleep, they've never gotten much sleep. Maybe they sort of they run kind of in stress, they like to have a really long day. Um, you know, for them, what they think is like normal energy levels, it might be actually them, you know, always running behind and eat coffee. So like you know, a lot of times I've, I've told people this, like, you know, clients that go on vacation, they come back, I've had this happen many times over the years, where it's like the first time, you know, maybe 10 years, they go on like a two-week vacation, one week even, and they actually get like a full like seven, eight, nine hours sleep a night. And they're kind of amazed at how different they feel on a daily basis. So like, oh, wow, like I felt amazing. Like every day I just woke up and just wanted to wake up. I'm like, yeah, that's how that's how you're supposed to feel all the time. So for a lot of people, they're very accustomed that, to, oh yeah, this from their lifestyle, they're not even accustomed. They're they're sort of like entrained that being fatigued is like a way of life. Like they think you're supposed to get really tired all the time. You're actually not. Um, you know, so maybe your husband though, you know, someone that gets six hours and they they function, at, you know, say at a high level, they might just only need six hours. There are those people, but I feel know, like he the, does do better when he does eight. Like if he does, well, he probably right, does. Well, that's, does. that's the thing. Like, yeah, for him, like he, it, it may be entirely natural for him where he hits two p.m. He's nicer. He's, like, he's nicer when he has seven or eight hours. Yeah, yeah. So that, like, snapping someone out of that, you have to sort of like take them out of their environment, go on a vacation, sleep a lot, and then sometimes they'll realize like, oh wow, like okay, I'm not, I'm actually not getting enough sleep. Like, like they'll tell the difference. Uh, but that, that's that can be a hard thing to describe to people. But yeah, but the general recommendation: seven, eight hours. Um, you, you really can't go wrong with that and every every hour you get less than like six and a half like it's just going to drop and drop and drop you know the people that try and run on five and they're caffeining their life up uh yeah you're gonna pretty much be guaranteed to have low testosterone levels all right number seven being overly fat lowers testosterone i think that's gets to the point number eight is cut the beer drinking and let's go to number nine supplements can help so talk about that what are the supplements that you kind of say these are really key to help your natural levels yeah so there's there's a few um you know the, the cheapy ones i'll go with those first like vitamin d that's a critical one uh, vitamin d deficiency is corresponds with testosterone insufficiency uh, pretty much like one to one uh so if you have low vitamin d levels uh, you increase them, the testosterone should go up. You can also do that naturally with light exposure. Uh, there's actually been, there's a, there's a funny study done in like 1970s, I want to say. It was red light therapy. Uh, it, was, it was red light, it was t- testicular exposure to red light therapy. So they basically took a group of guys, these researchers, you know, I, I, don't, I believe this is, this is a European study, but it was a, and they basically just exposed their testicles like to red light and their testosterone levels would go up like a lot. It was actually quite noticeable. The, so the fun fact for you, the, the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, uh, tanning beds are actually banned as a performance enhancer uh, for athletes because the light exposure will uh, cause an endogenous increase, an acute endogenous increase in testosterone, and you get a performance benefit from it. 
so I mean, what the recommendation then is just like try to go outside. Basically, if you live somewhere, you can go outside. Like, get some sunlight actually on your skin. Take off your shirt. But uh, vitamin D, uh, boron is something that can increase testosterone a little bit. Uh, zinc definitely can. Uh, you know, supplements aside from that, like triplets terrestris doesn't work at all. Uh, maca is one that can cause a pretty big increase in libido, but not necessarily a large increase in testosterone levels. Uh, another one that is actually in a product that I've recommended many times um, is a bulbine astelinus, which is a herbal supplement, which is uh, primarily harvested, I want to say, in Africa. But that causes an increase in endogenous pr- production pretty sharply, actually. Um, and the supplement I recommend for that is called Aggressive Strength. It's on the website. But I've seen that actually raise people's levels quite markedly. I know the guy that designed it as well. So there, there are things guys can take. Um, you know, and then even just get yeah, served. I want to say I'm not a fan of uh, multivitamins, but like if you're vitamin B deficient, about one third of people are. That can manifest itself as depression, anxiety, and you know, people won't feel right. Even increasing you know vitamin B levels, it's not going to increase testosterone per se, but if you're kind of in like that lower mood state, that could have an effect overall as a mindset. So it's a few things. Um, yeah, the big, the big things I would recommend getting checked: vitamin D, uh, magnesium levels. That, that's a big one too as well. Um, and then, you know, like I said, the other ones, uh, just, you know, as you need them, you know, you have to really have to know your numbers first, just taking stuff arbitrarily, like hoping, like, I hope this does something I'm like, you you won't know if it will, you won't know if it won't. I'm, I'm not a fan of doing the placebo effect. I mean, it's real, but you know, for something like testosterone, like there's no excuse not to get blood work done and just find out what, you know, your, what your numbers are and then make the changes. Awesome. And number 10 optimal levels for testosterone are 700 plus. And I, I love the fact that you, what you said is I think that what happens is, is people go to the doctor and the normal ranges in our regular, if you go to your regular doctor are so wide that they're not normal anymore. And I love the fact that you say, look, this is how you're going to feel the best. If it's seven, this is what you've seen when people are Mm -hmm. at 700 or, or higher, they're feeling their best. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, that's a common saying where they, I, I, I tell guys all the time: if you go to the doctor and your levels come back and they're like lowish normal, and you're and you're in your tw- especially if you're in your twenties, uh, you know, maybe actually you're, you go get it done. You're like, oh, it's, it's only, you know, uh, let's say you're twenty seven. It's like it's right at five hundred. I'm like, well, I'm not gonna say you need TRT, but like it should be a bit higher than that. And the doctor's like, you're fine, you're fine. I'm like, this go find a new doctor. Yeah, I mean, don't go in asking like, "Doctor, I want, I want a TRT." But yeah, you know, if you're in that lower normal range uh, and you're young, you know, or you know, whatever your age is, and a doctor's telling you it's fine, it's, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Um, it's supposed to be at that level. Like, just fire the doctor. Find a new one. <laughs> yeah, you know, fl- no, flat out, flat out. Um, you know, very few doctors are educated on the effects of testosterone. Most are, most doctors probably have low T themselves. Since most doctors are unhealthy, honestly. <laughs> um, so yeah. you know, just find a new doctor. You know, get get a doctor that lifts weights. That is, you know, sort of hip to like the research on the endocrinology, um, and you know, if, and if you got low T or like you know, you're, they're not, you're not sure of how to raise it, they're willing to work with you on it. At least you know, put in some resources. Yeah, you know, this, this this very weird idea in modern medicine that hormones somehow drive every metabolic, metabolic process in the body, but they don't affect health at all. It's it's, it's just I find it baffling. I've, I've had guys that happen to the other doctor like it's low, and the doctor is just insistent. That it, it's fine and their depression, their anxiety, their low sex drive. Well, you know, you should go see a therapist. I'm like, you don't need to see a therapist. You just, you have, a, you have low testosterone levels. If, if you increase awesome. those, it all goes away. And every guy I've ever had there, especially the guys that go on TRT, they're always shocked where it's like they, they got a new lease on life. Sex drive comes back, focus comes back, energy comes back. They start treating people better. Um, you know, that, that's, a, that's a big common myth too the idea of like if you have high testosterone, you're like a pushy asshole. You look at the actual research on this. Then, with the lowest levels of testosterone, are the most passive aggressive, you know, and report like the highest dissatisfaction, like in, in social interactions. So, like, you know, if you want to be like a dick to people, be low T. If you want to be nice to people, be high T. That's <laughs> that's how that works. And you're right. That's actually the that's a complete 180 from people what people think it is. Yeah, it, it just it's like this. this steroid, I mean, I want to talk about steroids per se, but like it's like the steroid myth where people think if you. Uh, if a guy takes testosterone, you put on 80 pounds of muscle and you start like, you know, punching puppies and like beating your girlfriend or something. It's like, it, that, that's not, that's not how those things actually work at all. Um, but uh, yeah, testosterone, you know, like I said, the, the, the higher natural levels are, the better you're going to feel flat out. All right. Well, tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. 
So the website is Cortez.site. Um, my big, the big way I actually share information, people, two sources. It's the newsletter, which I write uh, sort of every other day. And I go pretty deep on a pretty broad range of topics on that. And that can be found on the website. So sign for that. Uh, those emails that I send out are quite extensive. Very, very, very extensive. Um, and then the other spot, you know, for like the short, you know, brain candy stuff, uh, Twitter, AJA underscore Cortez. Um, I have a pretty large Twitter account around you know, about 80,000 followers. But that's where I, you know, I, t- I tweet daily and I have a pretty active Twitter feed. So those are the two best places. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being with us. And if you have a question that you want answered, go to questions at ChantelRayway.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.